the Everything But Politics podcast. Off we go. Here we are. Episode 82 of the Everything But Politics podcast. And if you're a parent or someone who is conscious about what they put into their body, you are most likely familiar with today's guest. I also don't know if anyone has gotten more out of their Costco membership than her. (laughs) Kate Kilfoy, a.k.a. That Crunchy Mom. Kate, welcome to our show. Thank you. I'm so excited to be on. I can't wait to chat with you guys. It's great to have you here as well. My my first question for you is that when you walk into Costco, do they know you on a first name basis at this point? Yeah. One of my friends actually works there. (laughs) Um, so then like everyone now knows me and like, sometimes I like when I go in by myself, I like want to be like, don't worry, I'm not filming today. Like I'm not causing a ruckus, like just do my shopping. Um, but yeah, I'll like wave to the workers and we chat sometimes. That's so funny. And wait, you, you, you mentioned you were located in Iowa. Where, in, where in Iowa are you? The quad cities. Is that Des Moines area? I'm about two and a half hours from Des Moines. Towards Nebraska or Illinois? Illinois. I, I'm like right on the border of Iowa and Illinois. Oh, so you're like, what, two and a half hours from Chicago? Yeah. Okay. So that's like, if, you, if you're leaving Iowa, you go to Chicago opposed to Omaha to fly out. Yes. Yep. Okay. No, that makes sense. So, so Kate, we, we've seen your content, but um, like I kind of said before we started, who who is Kate? Obviously, we've seen you all over social media, Instagram and TikTok in particular. Uh, do you have a background in nutrition or did you begin taking ingredients, recipes, all that good stuff um, more seriously once you became a mom? Yeah, definitely. When I became a mom, I took some like nutrition classes in college. Didn't really ever like think too much into it, but I was really good at them. Um, but like I have my degree in psych. So like I was not planning to go into nutrition. Actually, at one point I had told our um our trainer at our gym, I played softball in college. So I was talking to him and I was like, I think I want to go into nutrition. He was like, no, do not do that. Like it's way too much. Um, just steer clear of that. And I was like, Oh, okay. And just never like gave it a thought again. I took some nutrition classes. I enjoyed them. I was good at them, but I just was like trying to get my degree and get out. Um, I didn't like have plans to do anything health related. Although like in college and stuff, I did love to work out and like, I wouldn't eat, um, fast food or anything. Like when we would travel for softball, I usually would pack my own food, but it was never because like I wanted to be healthy. It was more because like I liked to be in shape and like, I didn't really care about like food on what food was doing on a cellular level. It was just kind of like, I want to look good. So I would meal prep and stuff, but never really cared about like it fully. And were your parents fit? Like where did that journey kind of start? Yeah. So my family has always like, we always grew up like eating balanced meals. So like dinner was always based around a protein and then we had like a carb and a vegetable. Um, but it was never like, it was never like forced upon me or anything. My parents are like super laid back. Um, all of my siblings though are like very into health. Um, my brother played D1 football. My sister, um, was a D1 swimmer. So like, everyone was just kind of into health, but never like, we never really cared about ingredients. It was just kind of like more, we like to be athletic. And and what led you to posting and creating content to share it to the mass? Okay. So I got pregnant my senior year of college. Um, and I, before I had gotten pregnant, like I was a typical college student, like I played softball for three years, my senior year, we all quit so we could have like a normal year. So like we would drink four times a week and we would go out all the time. And like, we just like, I was just living my best life um, until I got pregnant. And then um, I started to like have all these symptoms. Um, I started to get really bad anxiety. And when I would like go to the doctor, they would be like, yeah, we ran your tests. Nothing's wrong. Like it's in your head. And I would be like, no, 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 you guys don't understand. Like I, these symptoms are like far from normal. Like you guys have to help me. I can't live this way. And they would be like, what do you want us to do? Like we could put you on anxiety medicine, but that's really the extent. Like if, if your labs are coming back normal, what else do you want us to do? And so I kind of felt really hopeless. Um, and then I had my son and, um, I just kept feeling such a pull like when I would take him to the pediatricians or um, when I would like get health advice from 
these doctors, like, I would just be like, this doesn't seem right. Like, even when I was pregnant, my OB was like, yeah, any prenatal is fine. Cause I asked like, what's the best one I could be taking? She's like, just grab one from like Walgreens. They're all the same. And I was like, that's suspicious. Like, are you sure about that? But like, I didn't know anything. So I just did it. Cause I'm like, you're the expert, right? I'll just, I listen to you. Um, but then I kind of started to fall more into like my mom instincts, if that makes sense. And I just kept like, I would feel like red flags going off. Like, Hey, don't do this. Hey, don't do this. Like this probably isn't right. And I like kept leaning more in towards them. Um, my daycare provider was like super quote unquote crunchy and she would just kind of like plant little things in my ear. Like, Hey, have you ever looked into ingredients in your baby's shampoo and body wash? And I'd be like, no, but should I? And she would kind of like fill me in and then I would go do my own research. And, um, same thing with like vaccines. Um, my son had brain swelling at his four month shots and, um, that was a huge red flag to me. But again, the pediatrician was like, nope, it's fine. Like, you know, he'll, he'll be fine. And um, that's kind of when I was like, okay, like enough is enough. Like I'm going to take everything into my own hands now because I feel like I have been betrayed time and time again. Um, meanwhile, I was still feeling horrible. Like I had horrible brain fog. Um, I felt like I was out of my body 24 seven, constant panic attacks, constant feelings of like doom. Um, I couldn't stand for more than a couple minutes at a time. Um, like my toenails were yellow. Like I was just like, there's gotta be someone who can help me. Cause I am at the point I can no longer live this way anymore. Like it's like do or die at this point. Um, and I Googled like natural, natural doctor near me. And, um, a clinic came up that was like more natural minded. I went to them, they ran tests. I did like the Dutch test, the OCH test, the HTMA hair analysis test. And they were like, Okay. We found your problem. Like I, my, um, I had insane amounts of mold in my body. My thyroid was so messed up. My liver was just stagnant, wasn't detoxing properly. My nervous system was out of control, which was, um, a lot to do with like why I was feeling so out of body while I, why I kept having all these panic attacks. Um, and I just started to like find these more natural minded people to help me heal. And then once I started to heal, I was like, okay, I have to like start helping other people because if I feel this way, 100% other moms, other people, um, even kids, like they have to feel this way, right? Like the, I'm not the only person who has these symptoms. So I um, went back to school to be a doctor in naturopathy. Um, I haven't graduated yet. I'm still in school, um, but I started doing like TikTok and just like, I'm someone who um, I'm very outspoken about my opinions. I'm not scared to say like my opinions. So I just started posting on TikTok for fun. It kind of started to blow up. And then last March I took it over to Instagram and that's when it like really blew up into like this big thing. And then, yeah, I quit my full-time corporate job and I do Instagram for a living now, like helping people with um, ingredients and stuff. Uh, it is awesome what you do. And, and I think what drew me to your content is that you're so based. So I, I loved what you were putting out. It was, it was so good. But going back to something you, that you did mention, it is so fucked up when you like the senior in college and you're having these, um, you know, your panic attacks and anxiety and you're really just not feeling well. And the first things the doctors want to do is, oh, we don't know what to do. So here's some anxiety medication and go deal with it on your own. It's like totally messes up the psyche. And at 22, 21, 22 years old, it's like you're just setting you up for disaster for the rest of your life. Exactly. And I was like, I'm pregnant. Can I be taking these? And like, I know people do take anti-anxiety medicine medication while pregnant, but I was like, that, are we sure this is okay? And like, I was just so scared to do anything that could potentially set my son up for not the best outcome. So I was just like, I'm just, I have to suck it up. I can't use the medication. And I'm not saying people can't, but like, that was just my mindset going into it. I had no idea about medication. Um, so yeah, I was just like, well, I can't, I'm not going to take the medicine. So I guess you can't help me. And I just, I was kind of forced to like find my own path of healing. Well, at this point in time, were there any, I, I for us personally, we like the carnivore MDs of the world. Uh, Sean Baker is someone we really like. Uh, the Instagram page carnivore Aurelius. I don't, were these around at the time? I mean, what, what did you res resort to, to find these uh, positive influences? Dude, there was nothing. I knew of no one back then. Like, I, I feel like, I don't know, I graduated college in 2018. I just feel like 
there probably were accounts, but I had no idea about them. Like that was not what I was looking at on Instagram and stuff. So like I knew no one, I knew nothing. I felt like an alien. I felt like so isolated. I knew of like two other people total who like lived a more natural lifestyle. Um, but then I found like one, two mom Facebook groups that were crunchy and those were like my life saviors. Like, um, I would just like ask questions in there all the time. And I would just like read columns from moms about like things they do products they use. And like, they would post, um, studies to back up what they were saying. And like, I just started like absorbing this information, like a sponge and it like became addicting. It became my whole personality. I went from like the cool party chick who's oh like you call me at 4 p.m. You want to go get a beer? Absolutely. I will be anyone in like a chugging beer contest to like the mom who the non-toxic mom who's anti-vax, who, you know, brings no um, bad ingredients into her home. And like my lifestyle did a complete 180. Like my friends think it's hilarious because I went from on this like end of the spectrum to like all the way extreme on the other end of the spectrum. And for our listeners who don't really know what you eat, what does a daily nutrition look like for you? So when I was like going through my hardcore healing, um, cause I needed to heal my gut. I had horrible candida. Um, mm. I was like strict carnivore, right? Like I was eating meat, avocado, and that's basically it for like a good six months. That was my, like, that was my diet. And then I started adding in, um, like berries, honey. Um, I could start like tolerating more things. So I would say I eat more of an animal based diet diet, but it's not like, I'm not super strict anymore. Right. Like I just was eating Siete chips before this, but like, I don't eat, I don't eat seed oils. Um, you know, we eat like mainly real whole foods, but like now that I am better, like I'm fine if I want to eat, you know, something out of the ordinary every once in a while. I'm not, I'm not Paul Saladino. Like I will eat, you know, other foods sometimes. <laughs> it- Speaking of your carnivore esque, um, a great snack I've been putting together. I get like the oven roasted turkey and the slice of avocado, and I like wrap like a little turkey wrap with the avocado yeah. in the middle. It's a great snack. But given your Costco, I'm gonna I'm gonna use the word knowledge. I've been getting these beef sticks at Costco, and I honestly don't know if they're like they're really good, and I feel like it's a good source of protein. But I don't know if it's total bullshit. Or it's a good little four gram of protein snack. I, I don't know if you're familiar with what I'm talking about, but it's like pre-packaged. It's not a Kirkland brand. It's, it's something bullshit. different. It's probably bullshit, but totally. I want to get it's I want to get Crunchy Mom Kate's opinion on this. Is it not Chomps? I don't think so. It's like it's like green and black packaging. Oh, I don't know. I don't know if I've ever seen them. You're gonna have to show me after this, and I can tell you if you're on the right path or not. Okay. Well, speaking Does of the right say path, Green Ridge. I don't know. I don't know. It, but but Kate, something you posted. Um, I'm not sure when, but that I buy actually is like that um, prepackaged sirloin from Costco. That is such a winner. I that's like the best snack too. Like that and the avocado. Like you're saying, it's so good. It is. And they used to add canola oil, I believe, because I used to not get it. Like I used to look at it and be like, this is perfect if they would just take out the seed oils. And then one day I just randomly checked again and they did. They added avocado oil. in. so I feel like the more we push like, hey, we're done eating crap, like the more companies listen, the more they're willing to change their ingredients. I agree. Uh, with, with that being said, though, a lot of these uh, a lot of like these packaging are in plastic. And I see so much shit on social media about like microplastics don't like drink out of plastic. But like I, I've been thinking about it a lot recently, and it literally everything has pla- is touched by plastic. Like literally everything. Your phone has plastic in it. Um, there's a great chance the water bottle you took a sip out of today is touching plastic in some capacity. I don't know. I just don't know how like you could avoid it at this point in time, April 2024. I think it's pretty unavoidable, honestly. But like some things you can do is like if you are using plastic, don't wash it in the dishwasher, right? Because then we're leaching that plastic and it's getting like into other things. So like if you are using plastic, preferably don't wash it in the dishwasher, just hand wash it. Or like something easy to swap out is like, if you are someone who uses a water bottle that's plastic, swap it out for, I mean, obviously when you buy like the little water bottles, you can't really avoid that. But like, if you have a water bottle you take to work every day, switch it out with like a clean canteen, stainless steel type water bottle. Um, And then like when you 
um, have leftovers, like put them in glass Tupperware. But other than that, I'm someone who's like, if it's out of my control, I'm not going to obsess about it. Um, I used to like obsess about every little thing. Like if someone tried to give my son a vegetable that wasn't organic, I would like have a panic attack. And then I got to the point where I was like, all right, I got to like chill out. Like that's not normal. Like I can't be so obsessed with every little thing. Otherwise, like that's not good for my health. So I'm just someone who's more like, all right, if I can't avoid it, like I'm not going to, I'm not going to let it, you know, consume me. Um, so yeah, that's kind of my thoughts on microplastics because it's like they really are everywhere. Well, and this is probably something you don't want to hear. I drink a lot of plastic water also. And a friend of mine saw online that the average human drinks about a credit card worth of plastic a week. That's insane, but I do believe it, uh, especially you with your plastic water bottles over there. Yeah, <laughs> but, two of them. Um, but I feel I would rather like people always message me like, should I drink tap water or if I can only afford getting plastic water bottles, should I do that? I'm like the plastic water bottles, 100 percent, in my opinion, like tap water has like birth control, pharmaceuticals, heavy metals, fluoride. Like I would much rather you drink purified, clean microplastic water than like the pharmaceutical water, you know. So if you do grab an ice mountain, will you put it in a glass bottle like a Yeti or something or will you drink it out of it? No, yeah. I the, I feel like the damage is already done if we're drinking it out of there. It doesn't really matter. Well, I feel like it's got to be worse if, like, I, I do this. I leave water bottles in my car for later when I'm thirsty. I live in Florida, so they got to <laughs> be they got to be melting in the into the water. Yeah. Yeah, that one we don't want to be doing. That is like <laughs> I'm like a stickler on that part. But then I think like, okay, I know those huge packs of water bottles were sitting on a semi roasting in the back of the semi. So it's kind of like true. the damage is already done. You know, at least you're drinking like purified water. No spring water, no purified water. water. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's good too. So I want to go back to like someone who is pregnant or is going to be having a child and they one or two, what do you feed your child besides like the formula? Well, ideally breast milk and then if you're talking about like solids like you when babies start solid yeah, food exactly. okay this is this is like my holy grail of what i think a six month plus baby should be eating um absolutely no rice cereals no oats oat oatmeals like people always say my pediatrician told me to do it I, no guys no the baby's gut cannot handle oats and rice cereals and those basically have no nutrition in them i would be doing avocado i would be doing liver pate i would be doing like steak um i follow baby led weaning so you're like cutting these up in a way that like babies can gnaw on them um i would be doing cod liver oil um i would be doing bone broth stuff like that like not i know we're always taught like you know, give, give the babies fruits and vegetable purees. And it's just like, we could be, we could be giving them so much more nutrient dense foods than, you know, what's offered in the store by Gerber. Yeah. Well, and I think like growing up, like our, our mom, like she kind of just fed us like shit, like literally anything, like be Welch's Cheetos, anything cosmic brownies. <laughs> and yeah. it, it probably wasn't until right after high school that I, I kind of started realizing how bad some of this stuff was. Like, how do you stop, like, your kid from eating that stuff when, like, the soccer team and the mom brings, right. you know, snacks? Yeah. So I like to take a very gentle and, like, um, how do, like, respectful approach. Like, I don't think anyone should just, like, if I were to go this learn this information today, I wouldn't just go throw everything out in my cabinet and, like, you know, cause my son to be like, whoa, what's going on? Like, I can't eat anything anymore. And like, you know, I just like to take like a gentle and respectful approach. And like, if I was a child and my mom was trying to, you know, get us to eat healthier, I would want her to one, explain to me like, hey, we are going to start eating um, healthier. So we are going to try to cut out things slowly that no longer have food dyes in them, you know, don't have seed oils, aren't ultra processed. Like, 
we can have these things when we're out and about having fun with friends or at a party, you know, at grandparents for special occasion. But like what we're going to start bringing into our house are foods that are going to make us feel good. Um, foods that are going to help our bodies grow and our, our brains be nourished and, you know, help us to become smarter and help us to become stronger and give us sustained energy. Like I love talking about the positives of food rather than being like, you know, red 40 cause is going to cause you to have ADHD or something like that. Cause kids, the more we pressure kids, the more they're going to fight it. Right. So if we can like make it a more enjoyable experience, that's what I'm all about. Like, I love taking my son to the store and being like, okay, um, you pick out what fruit you want this week, or, um, let's go pick out one of our favorite snack options. And like, he kind of knows the boundaries of like what brands we get. And like, he can pick whatever he wants from those certain brands. And, you know, every once in a while, if he really wants to try something cool that he saw his friend eat, like I will let him get it. Um, just because I don't want there to ever be a power struggle of like, my mom's so strict, I have to hide food from her. Or, you know, my mom's so strict that I can't come and tell her things because, you know, she's going to overreact if I tell her I ate a popsicle with food dye in it, that type of thing. I don't want that type of relationship with my son. And I don't think it has to be like all or nothing um, in this lifestyle. You know what I mean? It's just kind of like lessen the toxin load where you can and let go where you can't. Uh, I think it starts with, First off, you become the soccer mom, so you never have to worry about any, not only your kid, but any of the other kids eating shit. Um, Kate, I'm, I'm curious, how old is your son? He just turned five. Okay. So, like fives, is that kindergarten? He, um, He's in preschool right now, so he'll be kindergarten next year. Okay, but like, like Evan just said, you know, like the soccer mom thing, I guess that's kind of, there's more parental guidance. How does that pivot, I guess? let's say five, six, seven, eight years from now when you're at the lunch table. Cause I could recall being at the lunch table and like, like Evan said, uh, we ate like shit when we were 13, 14 years old. And then, but like, it's different when your, your peers are all doing that. And when you're 13, you might not realize that this is the way, this is what's best for me because you kind of do want to fit in. So how do you ingrain that mindset into your son from a young age? Yeah. So, um, we homeschool, <laughs> but oh, if he were to go to school, I think that I would probably try to send healthier snack choices with him. Right. And then like, if he wanted to get something in the lunch line, go for it. But like what he's eating at home for breakfast and for dinner and all the other snacks, like that's going to be healthy. So like if one meal has to be bad out of the day, I'm going to let go of the pressure to, you know, make him bring food um from home but like obviously i would try to hype up like the food from home and how it makes us feel better and all that kind of stuff but like i i would never want to pressure him to feel like you know i'm the oddball out because at middle school and like high school that can be brutal for kids and i would never want to like add stress onto him you know in that situation so if he wanted to eat the crap eat the crap but when we're at home you're eating you know healthy totally and, and what led you to doing homeschooling because that that seems to be more more and more common since COVID. Have you seen public schools? <laughs> yeah. uh, no, but um, he, we started him out at a Montessori school when he was three. He had a bad experience. Like they were also just giving him tap water and like, you know, 2% ultra processed milk and like the snacks were just crap. And I was like, I'm not paying, you know, $10,000 a year for this. Um, he also had really bad separation anxiety. And so I pulled him out and then, this year, we tried to put him back in preschool at a different school. Same thing, just like bad separation anxiety. I loved his teachers, but um, I just like felt such a calling like, okay, we've tried for, you know, two years and this isn't working. Like maybe we are just supposed to homeschool. Um, a lot of my friends homeschool. Homeschooling is super popular in my town. There's like co-op. So, you know, we could get together as groups. Um, my neighbors across the street, they have 10 kids. They homeschool. Like it's just so popular now these days that like, like a lot of people are like, oh, how is he going to, you know, how is he going to socialize? I'm like, we socialize all day, every day. He literally is outside playing with his friends all day while kids are sitting at desks in school. Like homeschool takes like an hour a day. It's not like a full eight hour thing. You know what I mean? No, yeah, I, and I, I saw, I saw something on right, right. Yeah. Right, and right. I saw something on Instagram. It was actually today. It's like schools, hospitals, and prisons are all like, like drawn by the architects too. the same way like they're all like constructed the same way 
And obviously, when you're there, I mean, I guess I graduated high school in 2018. So at that time, and even like prior to that in elementary school, middle school, none of this information was even out there. So you don't even think COVID really kind of exposed everything. Yeah. So I guess my perspective, if I was in a 17 in high school and this was coming out, I'd probably be like, what the fuck too? But you don't know until you know. Yeah, exactly. For sure. All right, Kate, let's shift gears here for a second. Uh, like you said, when you first began creating your content, it was just kind of something you enjoyed and you were in those two Facebook groups, but was it just something that you wanted to you know, get the word out? Um, I mean, why, why did you elect to make your life as public as it's become? Yeah. So when I started learning stuff, I was like, holy crap. Like I like really went down the rabbit hole of like, we are being poisoned on purpose. Like we are being made sicker on purpose. Like, and everyone around me has no idea. Like I have to start telling people. Um, so I like my very first TikTok I ever did. I like stitched a video that said like, give us an unpopular opinion about blah, blah, blah. And I said, um, mothers are, when women become pregnant, they are made to start researching more on what they want in their nursery versus um, if they're going to breastfeed or not, if they're going to vaccinate or not, if they are, you know, if they're knowledgeable about all these toxins, we are literally like made to become blind to all the corruption that's in front of us. Um, and essentially like that really took off. And then I just started making more videos from there. And then um, I started getting more into ingredients and my neighbor was like, no, you should start going in stores and like reviewing products. And I was like, okay, like perfect. Um, so I hired my neighbor, one of the gals who's homeschooled, she's 15 and we go once a week to the store. She films me and then edits. And then I just like put out the content. Um, and it just kind of like, I was like, all right, I'm just going to start repurposing these videos over onto Instagram. And it just blew up. Like I started March of last year and I was able to quit my job. I quit. Well, I was able to quit it probably like six months in, but I stayed because I was nervous. Like, what if this just like ends abruptly? But then it got to the point where I was like, okay, I'm com like, I'm confident I can leave. So totally. I quit my job. What's what's the girl's name that records you? Annika. Shout out Annika. Shout out. She nope. is a lifesaver. So, where most of these visits, we go to Costco. Do you have Meyer in Iowa? No, I wish. What what else is there? There's obviously Walmart, Costco, Walmart, Costco, Walmart, Kroger. Fresh Time. No, my closest Kroger is Illinois, I believe. Publix. Um, no, Publix, no, Florida. I don't even have that mm. either. What uh, else is there? Aldi. Is there, uh, Albertsons. Nope. I literally only have like four main places. I don't even have like Trader Joe's. I mean, I do like an hour away, but. I'm not driving now. Way to make. I, I have a hot take. I, I think Trader Joe's is overrated. It's so small. It it's so small. Yeah, the only cool thing about Trader Joe's is they don't allow food dyes, but like a lot of their snacks are still filled with like seed oil, so it's kind of. Yeah, is there a Whole not. Foods Whole Foods near you? No, in Chicago. I mean, you're not gonna go to Chicago for Whole Foods. No, oh, no. I yeah, I really have like my four main grocery stores that I just like recycle through for content and that's about it and, and what, what did you right. notice your your spike in followers did it just come like organically or did you really like step on your marketing game no i would just post videos and they just kind of started blowing up i think like within the first like 12 days of consistently posting i had like 10k followers and then it just like kept going 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 and then like i think last summer i hit a hundred thousand and now I'm at like 240. It just kind of like really escalated. I found that if I post controversial stuff, I post things that are going to get like under people's skin or like, you know, stuff that people might not know. And like everything I'm posting is the truth. It's just like people are so blind to it that when they see my video, they're like, wait, what did this chick just say? And then like people will fight in the comments and it would just like engagement will just soar. And then I'll, yeah, I'll be able to find my people. And that's kind of how my page kind of grew. That's awesome. And, and are you at the point in time yet where people, random people have recognized you? Yeah, a little bit. Not like in every day. Like, I don't think I'm like cool, but like sometimes <laughs> people, people will message me and be like, oh my gosh, I just saw you at Costco and I was scared to say hi. <laughs> That's crazy. I mean, it's crazy the the power that, 
you know, you, and like the, how many people you could reach with your phone, not even, not only just the United States, but really like everywhere. It is absolutely insane. Yeah, my sister lives in Florida. She lives in Naples. And like she was at Bible study one time and um, everyone was talking about like their favorite like influencers to follow. And like two girls said my name and my sister was like, wait, what? And they're like, yeah, do you know her? And they're like, because my, my sister has a different last name because she's married. And my sister was like, yeah, that's literally my sister. So it's just like crazy that people from like all over, like the same thing happened. One of my friends was out of town and I think in Washington and like someone was watching my video and my friend was like, wait, is that Crunchy Mom Kate? And her friend was like, yeah, I love that chick. And she's like, dude, that's my friend. Like, it's just crazy. The power of the internet. Like you can reach so many people. Yeah, we, we put our mom on your TikTok. She loves your stuff now. No way. I love that. <laughs> so speaking of you leaving your job to go to Instagram, how for someone who would want to do that, how do you even get paid from Instagram or TikTok? um i get paid mainly by ads and affiliate links um i would say it's pretty even on how i i got really lucky with my affiliate links um and i am able to make quite a bit from my affiliate links just because like my core products that i use all the time like everyone also loves right so like that way i was i got really lucky in that area because i know um you know not everyone is as lucky to get so many people to use their links and then um i get paid by ads so like brands i have a i have a management team so they'll reach out to my management team and um they'll kind of like negotiate a deal set a price and then i'll do either stories or reels or a tiktok whatever the brand is kind of wanting and when did you think to get a management team was that someone someone recommended to you yeah it funny story so this i knew i'm i knew nothing about social media, how to be an influencer. Like I, I didn't even know how to look at my analytics until a management team reached out to me and were like, Hey, can you send us your click links and your um, insights? And like, all, and I was like, what's that? Like they literally had to send me a step-by-step -step of how to send this information to them. I was just like doing my thing, like nothing. But um, this summer a management team reached out to me and asked to like um, do like just have a meeting. And I didn't really know what a management team was. And so it kind of just like fell through and we never met. And then um, like by crazy coincidence, my manager now actually works for that same team that reached out for me, reached out to me in the summer. Um, I like randomly met her at the museum and she like said like, Hey, I work for this management team, blah, blah, blah. Um, and I was like, wait, no way you guys had reached out to me this summer. And then we kind of like reconnected and yeah. And I think it got to the point where I knew I needed a management team when like, I could no longer keep track of like what, what needed to be posted what day. Um, and then my management team, when I got on with them, they just like really soared me. Like they were finding me so many brand deals because I was just kind of waiting for brands to reach out to me. Whereas like my management team is also able to reach out to other people. So um, they really like took it up a notch for me. So I joined my management team, like the same day I quit my corporate job. That's, that's cool. And it just goes back to show the the power of the social media. I mean, in, in your life, you probably could have never imagined that you'd be doing what you're doing at this point in time. Oh, never. Like, I always knew that I hated corporate world and like I needed out of that rat race. Like I used to sit at my desk. Luckily, during COVID, we got to work from home. So like the past four years I was working from home, but that first year my son was born, I used to sit in office and literally like cry at my desk and like just try to come up with ways that I could make money so that I could get out of this rat race to go raise yeah. my son because like I never wanted to I never corporate was not my calling right like helping people was my calling and I think like I turned my pain into my purpose like I suffered for so many years feeling like there's no hope and then like I kind of leaned into God and like he literally transformed my whole life like I I can't even begin to explain like how my life went from like rock bottom to where it is now. It's just wild to think about. I'm sure. No, and like I said, it's, it's amazing to see. I mean, obviously we're, we're on the outside looking in, but seeing what you've accomplished through social media is, is uh, extremely impressive. So congrats on your success. And I guess we're, you, I know you're, you're busy Kate, but before we let you go, I have a few more questions. Um, yeah. One, well, this is, this is actually one I've been curious about. Do you actually put butter in your milk? In my milk? Yeah. Or no, in your coffee. 
Excuse me. Oh, yeah. You guys, you have to try this. I, coffee, I, I was fascinated by this. Butter and maple syrup. Barrett loves decaf coffee sometimes. And like, I don't even drink coffee on a regular basis at all. But like when he asks for decaf coffee, it's decaf coffee, butter and maple syrup. I'm not kidding. It's the best tasting like latte, I guess you'll ever have. You have to try it. People be hating on butter. I, I love, I've used butter for everything. And another thing that we used to eat, or I shouldn't say eat, but use when we ate like shit when we were kids is Pam, which is straight poison. Yeah. I don't even know what that is. What is Pam? <laughs> I think it, when I looked on the back, it's like a, it's like a mixture of like canola oil, rapeseed oil. Like it's just a bunch it's of, a, it's a bunch like, of things you can't yeah. even pronounce. Yeah, it, essentially. And like, yeah, I grew up on that too, right? Like nobody yeah. knew better. Nobody, yeah. And and another thing that um you've been open about on your social media, and I'd like for you to explain to our listeners and to myself, because I've recently stopped with these, is these like premier protein drinks and easy accessible drinks from Costco. Why are these so bad? So yeah, the, my video I did on like premier protein and ensure people went wild on that video. They were, they were like, I'm so offended. Why would you ever say that? Like this drink saved my X, Y, Z's life while they were in the hospital, blah, blah, blah. And I'm just like, people deserve better choice ingredients first off, but second off, these have no bioavailable nutrients in them, right? They're just all synthetic junk. They're seed oils. Um, there's like fake sugars, like nobody, no human should be drinking these things. And it's like, don't get mad at me for pointing the things out get mad at the people who are serving these, right? Like if you look at the, what hospitals serve to patients, it's criminal. Yeah, well, it, is, it is absolutely crazy. It, and like I said, it's always been like, it's so, uh, it's efficient and it's easy. You're on the go and you are one of these people that like is conscious about consuming the proper amount of protein. Why, why wouldn't you have a little 30 gram premier protein shake on the go driving to work? It's just, it makes sense. But at the same time, it doesn't, as you pointed out. Yeah. Like I used to drink those all the time. Like, and I thought I was being healthy, right? Like I would hit the gym. I would drink a premier protein shake after, like, I'm not, I'm never saying like, Oh, I'm so much better. Cause I never drink these. I used to drink these all the time. Like I used to use all the crappy protein supplements. Um, yeah, I just, I didn't know better. Now that I do know better, I like love to tell people like, hey, there's better choice options. Yeah, I mean, I, prior to you putting that out, I, I honestly, it made sense because there are some things you can't pronounce on the label, but seeing seeing like, you know, sometimes you just need like that light bulb to go off. And for, mm -hmm. for me, that was your piece of content. So I guess thank you for that. And That's done hard. drinking Premier Protein. Uh, Kate, before we let you go here, I have a list of foods that I'm going to read off and you're going to tell us if you would let your son eat this or no shot. Are you ready? Okay. All right. Yeah, I'm excited. Skinny pop. No shot. Almond milk. No shot. We're raw milk drinkers. Farm raised fish. Absolutely not. Criminal grain fed beef straight to the trash no i'm just kidding if that's the only thing available then yes like i'm not too picky i just prefer like grass-fed grass-finished gatorade no i know what you're gonna say to this one butter absolutely grass-fed last one this was i'm curious what you're gonna say on this one chick-fil-a no they uh no chick-fil-a i used to Think of like as a better choice option, but they actually started putting antibiotics back into their um, meat. So beware. That's like probably, I don't eat fast food, but that's definitely my one guilty pleasure is I, I really do enjoy a nice chicken sandwich from Chick-fil-A every time. It never misses. Oh yeah. I Spicy chicken sandwich with some pickles, fries, and Chick-fil-A <laughs> sauce was my go-to and a diet lemonade. I loved that. Yeah. I mean, I haven't been in a little bit, but you know, it's probably for the best. Yeah, yeah. We should, yeah, we should stay away there. It's not good. Well, Kate, you're absolutely awesome. Appreciate you coming on our show, sharing some knowledge um, on really everything here in the last, whatever, 45 minutes, whatever it's been. And uh, 
where where can people find you on social media? Um, and you have an email, a newsletter. What what do you have going on, Kate? Yeah, so you, um, you can find me on Instagram. I'm most active there, uh, that Crunchy Mom Kate, and then also TikTok, same username, that Crunchy Mom Kate. Um, I don't, I like to steer clear of TikTok. I'll like post once a day, but that's about it. But Instagram, I'm always like active on stories, DMs. You can always reach me there. Awesome. Well, thank you all for listening. Thanks and for joining. We us. will see you next week, Kate. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me, bye guys. Bye.